There are now more than 80,000 confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus outbreak. What started in Wuhan, China has now spread across the globe. But what do we actually know about the coronavirus outbreak and what are we still yet to learn about it? Well, this is what I aim to cover in today's video. What we do and don't know yet about the SARS-2 coronavirus. So I've mainly been taking some information from this recent cell paper that has pretty much experts opinions on what we know and what we don't know about this new outbreak. So let's start with what we do know about COVID-19 as it's also referred to. So SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus is a type of coronavirus, a virus that can cause a severe respiratory disease and so SARS actually stands for Sudden Acute Respiratory Disease. It was previously referred to as severe and it emerged in Wuhan, China back in December last year. So this isn't the first coronavirus outbreak that's ever occurred, it's actually the third recently emerged zoonotic coronavirus outbreak. And this is after the SARS, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome outbreak in 2002-3 and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome outbreak that also occurred recently. So as I mentioned, coronavirus, well, it is a virus. So what actually is a virus? Well, it's a small infectious agent that replicates only inside a host cell. So for example, human cells, bacterial cells, it, that's the only way it can replicate. And so what does the coronavirus actually look like? So the name coronavirus comes from the term corona, which in Latin means crown, which is to explain the, the shape it resembles. So the spike proteins you see around the outside kind of resemble the monarch's crown. But this virus also contains RNA as well. It's an RNA virus. So how does the coronavirus get into the host cell? Well, these spike proteins are really important for it. And so these spike proteins have a domain, which is just part of the protein, which is a receptor binding domain. And the receptor it binds to can be found in these host cells. So for example, a human host cell. And based on the current research already available on this novel coronavirus, we know that this receptor that it binds to is ACE2, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And so what happens is the coronavirus, these spike proteins, it recognises this ACE2 receptor and that enables entry into the cell. So the question is, can we block this interaction to be able to prevent the spread of the virus? So one bit of information that would really help scientists be able to develop drugs that could target this interaction to block and prevent transmission is to have the protein structure of the spike protein. And while a publication came out only the other week that actually has the cryo-EM structure of the spike protein of coronavirus, this novel coronavirus, and it's kind of amazing how quickly this uh, structure was done. And so now that we have the structure in hand, we have a better understanding of the interaction that this um, spike protein forms with the ACE2 protein. But, you know, can we still find a cure? Well, other information that has been really useful as well has been genomic information of the sequencing information of the coronavirus. And to quote Christian Anderson, science has moved with blazing speed during this epidemic, and it really has. We now have more than 50 sequencing data of different coronavirus strains that have been found in different patients. And this information is so valuable for being able to work out how the disease is spreading and to be able to guide the sign of diagnostics, drugs and vaccines. The sequencing has also shown that it's most closely related to a coronavirus species that um, infects bats. So bats are now the likely reservoir for this virus. And it's also shown that the epidemic has been the result of a single spillover event. And also by tracking how the viral genome has mutated over time, we can see that the epidemic is sustained by human-human transmission. How exactly this human-human transmission occurs though is yet not fully understood but understanding this would be really important to knowing how best to prevent the spread. And as I mentioned, it's so far thought to be a single spillover event, and we can tell this by tracking how mutations have changed over time in the coronavirus. And so you can develop this kind of molecular clock to see the evolution of the virus and the spread. However, as I said, there are still many unanswered questions, and so the sequencing and the sharing of the sequencing information still needs to continue and be shared amongst scientists around the world. So what are these unanswered questions then? Well, one thing we kind of need to work out is how effective would these interventions be in preventing the spread? 
And are there missing transmission pathways that we've yet to notice besides just the human-human transmission? And are the locations of viral transmission connected? And more on from this point, are there any environmental factors or human factors that may be influencing the spread of the virus between different people? And other important questions to address is what is the spread of asymptomatic viral transmission? And more on from that, how long does someone have to have the virus before they develop any symptoms? And just to say what we have been able to get from the sequencing data is we were actually able to use the sequencing data to generate the, the spike protein structure. And so it really is important that we continue these efforts to get sequence information out and around and spread to people around the globe. So will we be able to find a new vaccine? Maybe, maybe not, but there's also potential hope that instead of finding a new vaccine, we could repurpose existing drugs that could try and target this spike protein ACE2 receptor interaction, which could hopefully offer new opportunities to prevent the spread that we have seen starting from Wuhan, China, to amongst other regions in China and across the globe. And hopefully we can prevent this from spreading much further. But it's not just on the scientists. Being able to stop this spread of the coronavirus takes toll on the healthcare system, public health and governmental authorities as well. And hopefully by uniting together and the amazing work we've seen so far, this will get stopped at some point. And the latest update is that it isn't yet a pandemic, but unfortunately we will just have to wait and see what will happen. So hopefully this has been a good overview of what we do and don't know currently about the novel coronavirus. So as always, thanks for listening.